I was eight years old when I first experienced the sting of death. Jacob was a classmate of mine who was riding his bike outside of his home when he was struck by a vehicle and killed on the spot. At the time, I was young. I didn't understand what had happened, and I certainly didn't expect for it to happen again. Flash forward six years. It was the first day of eighth grade. My friends and I were teeming with confidence and excitement. We were finally the top of the academic food chain, at least of the middle school. As I lay in bed that night, looking forward to all of the exclusive activities that eighth graders had access to, my mom walked into my room wearing an expression that I had never seen before. On her shoulders, she bared the news that two of my friends had been killed in a crash on the way home from school, and a third was in a coma at a local hospital. As a teenager just one year away from learning how to drive, this tragedy hit me in a whole new way. It got me wondering, why do crashes happen? Why are they so frequent? And what can I do to prevent them? Since then, I've dedicated my career to preventing as many transportation fatalities as possible. I do this in my work as a transportation engineer, where I work to influence the number of transportation safety devices that are out there that can prevent crashes. But I also do this in my work as a researcher here at Virginia Tech by researching new ways of improving transportation safety and saving lives. A few years ago, I decided to set a quantitative goal. It was my desire to save a million lives within my lifetime. You've got to dream big, right? In the three hours that we're here at TEDx Virginia Tech, there'll be approximately 2,500 crashes that happen in the United States alone. In those crashes, approximately 675 of those will involve some form of injury to the occupants. And approximately 12 of those will involve at least one fatality. And if you ask me, this is unacceptable. But what if I told you that 80% of those crashes could be prevented? In addition, those fatalities and injuries would never have happened. Let's step back. Automotive manufacturers over the last decade have been instrumental in improving vehicle safety. They've implemented devices that use video cameras and radar systems in order to evaluate the surroundings around a vehicle and to prevent crashes in that way. These systems do things like monitor the speed of the vehicle in front of you and slow you down if they slow down. Additionally, if you're changing lanes and someone's in your blind spot that you don't see, the system can warn you before you're involved in a collision. But these systems are limited by the ability to actually see your surroundings. So if you're following behind a wide-sized vehicle or a large tractor trailer and you can't see what's in front of you, neither can the system and you're left in the dark. A new system called Connected Vehicle Technologies is able to eliminate all of these problems. In this way, vehicles are able to communicate with one another, essentially sending messages that say, here I am, I'm over here, please don't hit me. In reality, what's happening is that every tenth of a second, this little box that will be inside of your car is going to, to send out information, including your GPS location, the speed at which you're traveling, the direction you're heading in, and your acceleration or deceleration rate. So for example, if I'm following this little cozy coop here, this little box is sending out a message every tenth of a second that says, here I am, here I am, here I am. And then all of the connected vehicles that are involved with this system on the road, then receive all of this information, process it, and then put it together to determine the puzzle pieces that make up its surroundings. So this system is able to communicate wirelessly. This means that it is un unimportant to have a visual system around you. So since it relies on wireless communication, we don't need to be able to see around that large truck or around that sharp curve. We can know exactly what's happening around us. In fact, the system is even much more versatile. We can provide these devices in smaller sizes to pedestrians and bicyclists so that even if drivers can't see that they're there, the system can know that they're there and avoid a collision. In the near term, today, the United States Department of Transportation has invested in seven test sites across the United States where researchers can go and collect data on how real drivers react to real driving situations using this technology. Researchers have been able to evaluate the best means of communicating these messages to drivers. Whether it's through an LCD screen that's embedded into the driver's console of your vehicle, and messages pop up visually. Or it could also be an audio system 
where certain messages get popped up through your, your radio system in your car and warn you in that way. In the near term, crash prevention systems will become uh, mandatory for new cars in the next couple of years. The United States Department of Transportation has supported the implementation of these vehicles, of these systems in your own vehicles coming in the next couple of years. These systems have the potential of providing safety benefits by preventing crashes, but also by improving mobility by reducing the amount of time that you're unnecessarily stopped along the roadway. And this example that I'm about to provide will show you how this system can interact in the near term along the roadways. So imagine that there are six vehicles traveling along this highway. Two of them are involved in a crash, and one of them happens to be equipped with a connected vehicle technology. Once the crash happens, this connected vehicle is then able to send out a special message that indicates that there's been a crash and that the road is blocked. The first two vehicles that are going to approach the scene do not have connected vehicle technology, nor do they have any sort of crash prevention technology in their vehicles. They arrive as soon as the crash happens. The first vehicle slams on the brake and is able to stop on time, but the second vehicle behind him is not able to stop in time and causes what we call a secondary crash. The next vehicle to approach the scene is a connected vehicle. As soon as the crash happened, it received a message saying that there's a crash ahead, so they should be aware and be able to stop their car. This driver then releases the gas pedal and slowly applies the brakes and stops in a smooth and controlled manner. The vehicle following this connected vehicle has a radar detection system on the front of the car that realizes the connected vehicle is slowing down and consequently slows down this second vehicle. This prevents another secondary crash. In the long term, these connected vehicle systems may be able to eliminate the transportation infrastructure that you are currently familiar with. This includes traffic signals or stop signs. These systems will then be able to direct you within your car. So if you're approaching a green light, or sorry, if you're approaching a red light at an intersection, your car can determine if there's anyone else around the intersection attempting to access it at the same time as you. And if no one else is there, your car will display a green indication telling you that it's safe to go through the intersection without worrying about a crash. These systems will eventually possibly lead to connected vehicles and autonomous driving. This means that a computer inside of your car will be able to program a route from one point to another and be able to get you there with no human interaction. This is a great idea for someone like me who realizes that a majority of crashes are caused by human error. So by eliminating the humans from the equation, we reduce a lot of the crashes. I fully believe that this technology will be instrumental in saving lives on the nation's roadway. Within the first five years of implementation, this system could save 128,000 lives in just five years. Now, if you remember my goal, this is over 12% of saving a million lives. So will you join me in accepting this technology and embracing all it has to offer? And ultimately, will you join me in saving a million lives? Thank you.